Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Nancy Presbelowitz. We're going to be discussing her wonderful book, Total Fluff, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. But guys, make sure that you are checking in frequently because in addition to Total Fluff, Nancy has written four other, well, five other books, technically. She's written five other books, so six in totality to date with many more that haven't been published yet. So make sure that you're checking back in frequently. Total Fluff is the anchor for today's interview, but we're also going to briefly touch up on another one of her books that she's released recently called Swim Into Summer, both of which are available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And guys, Nancy was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business. Author Reputation Press Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and move it through ARP. You can find out more information on them at AuthorReputationPress.com. And listen, people, it is an absolute pleasure to have Nancy here on the line. Now, the moment you go to her Amazon page, her Barnes & Noble page, you start to do any research on her book, Total Fluff, you're going to instantly be greeted by probably the cutest little white dog that is on the cover of the book. I mean, it's just absolutely adorable. And when you see that image, you're instantly going to get sucked in, right? Because who could look at that face and turn away? I know I couldn't, all right? Uh, Let's just keep that quiet because if my dog hears me, I'm going to be a little jealous and I'm going to have some explaining to do. But... When you start to look into it, you understand this is a fictional narrative. Now, it's a quick read, just shy of 50 pages, but it's going to follow uh, a lost dog, a stray dog, and a family that comes to encounter it in the journey that they embark upon. And it's all about caring for animals, caring for family members alike, and it's just a wonderful, feel-good narrative. And I don't know about you... But we could absolutely use some of that joy infused into my day-to-day life. I'm sure you could as well. Given the past two and a half going on what feels like 40 years now that we've been dealing with this pandemic and the variations of lockdown that we've all experienced, a feel-good story of this magnitude is exactly what the doctor ordered. We have Nancy to thank because she's written it. She's the expert, she's done the research, and she is going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Nancy, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you? I'm okay today, thank you. How are you doing? I'm wonderful, Nancy. Thank you very much for asking. I'm really looking forward to this interview. It's an absolute pleasure to have you as a guest And Nancy, I know we have so much information to cover, but before we go into the book, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself and your background, please. Well, I grew up in uh, Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia in the suburbs. I have a sister, and, and that was it. We had a pet growing up. And we had another pet, was not a dog, was a cat. And we also had ra- uh, bunny rabbits, and we eventually got a bird and some goldfish. So I had a lot of different pets. And my mother and father were, were who brought us up. And um, my father was from New York area, and my mother was from New Jersey. And we moved to the suburbs of Pennsylvania, and... We had a lot of neighborhood people that also had pets. In fact, um, the one that we got our pet was um, he was the she was the runt of the litter, and uh, was was going to be sent to um, a place. And we said let's let's adopt this dog. So we we kind of rescued it, and was a very beloved, valuable family pet for many many years. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know, Nancy, what I loved when I was researching your book is how much it resonated with me because I, too, 
come from a family where we were always around animals, right? I mean, first and foremost, I'm the youngest of six, all boys, right? So there was a lot going on in the household anyway. But then added on top of that, the dogs, the cats, the fishes, the birds. The, I mean, listen, we had animals. It was like a zoo, right? And of course, not all at one time. It was varying points. But we, growing up, one thing that we always appreciated, one thing that we always loved were animals. So this is something that was right up my alley. And I was really intrigued when I was doing the research on it. And I love to hear that you have a similar origin story right and a similar background with regards to animals now nancy without further ado let's get the let's get it started let's go into the the book in more detail total fluff tell us a little bit more about it well total fluff um originated from an idea i had in childhood um about a dog um it was it was it was actually in elementary school and i realized i dug up before I wrote it, I dug up some um, inspiration from uh, seeing white dogs and seemed to have an affinity for white dogs and um, thinking they were, you know, very beautiful and decided to um, take some time and I had extra time and spend 15 minutes a day writing about um, this uh, a found animal since most of our, my, one of, most of our pets were found. And um, decided also to incorporate useful memories of uh, jobs that I had in, in youth, such I was a paper deliverer um, briefly, and decided to incorporate all these things that children dream of into the uh, adventure story for the book and neighborhood. I grew, grew up in a very close, tight-knit neighborhood, and uh, we had a lot of young children around with us, and, you know, we just... We, we played outside a lot, and I tried to incorporate this, not so much with other children, but with the, within the family of what could occur, and that's how I kind of generated ideas from my past experiences with um, animals and, and neighbors and, and friends and family to try to make an American story that people could relate to. Mm-hmm. You know, Nancy, talk to us about the book title, Total Fluff. Now, <laughs> I can assume where the title comes from, you know, and, and the connection that it has with the narrative itself. But, Nancy, you know what happens when you assume. So I'm not going to do that to you. I have you here on the line. I'm going to come right out and ask. Talk to our listening audience about why you chose that title to be the representation for your book. Okay, so there's three reasons I chose the title Total Fluff. The first one's not so good. When I was a child, we total sometimes meant know dilapidated banged up total like you totaled your car so mm-hmm. total fluff was in a, in a state that was the first uh, reason the second reason it's all about fluff it's all about his life as a dog totally about fluff um so and then the, the third reason is a writing reason total fluff also means totally fictional nothing um nothing true it's all made up no relation to real world events, except like from my writing experience that I have to draw from to make the book. So it's totally fictional, totally about the dog. And in the starting of it, he's in a bad way. There you have it. Now, next concept that I'd love to go into, Nancy, is inspiration. So you've already started to go in there briefly with a previous answer. Now, my curiosity is you said that you started the idea for this book at a very early age. Now, I'm curious, was writing something that was always a hobby of yours growing up? Were there particular artists that inspired you? Talk to us a little bit more about that inspiration behind creative writing. Well, yes. Um, it was in elementary school. We we seemed to all like writing stories, and the teacher inspired us. So, uh, it was a name of Mr. Walker would tell us about... Um, you know, he liked our our story, and I he sort of promoted me in a contest, and I won this contest, and I said, well, this is something I can do. He also read famous writer um, Judy Bloom wrote several books we were we would read, mm-hmm. um, and she was an inspiration. Um, many authors I would try to read very inspirational and um, 
that's kind of helped me develop a knowledge that, hey, I can do this. I'm practicing writing in school. We're coming up with ideas. We're, we're, we're putting them on paper. You know, we're trying to um, convey an idea. If people like it, it, it could be something that you could do when you get older because then you, you, you know how to do it and you're practicing it and hopefully it will come to something valuable. Entertain, you know, your readers, entertain who's ever reading. It has to be the first priority to help them in any way that you can. And then, you know, it's not just to convey ideas, it's to convey it to someone else. Like maybe you start out conveying it to yourself. Like many people say you should take a diary when you're young. Write a diary because if you're interested in writing, you get to know um, about yourself and uh, your day-to-day uh, activities and what is valuable to you through writing a diary. So that I did do that when I was very young, kept a diary very briefly, but it was like for one summer. Uh, and, um, you know, I tried to keep a diary at other times, wasn't so successful. No, and then, of course, you actually have to write stuff and see how it turns out. And you can be your own critiquer and – you know, edit it any way you want, you know, or you just straight out write it and hopefully, you know, you you can, it'll, it'll be uh, readable. Mm-hmm. Again, here on the line with Nancy Presbelowitz. We're discussing her wonderful book, Total Fluff, available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. Nancy, next question I'd love to go into. I'm curious, what would you say was a highlight for you? in writing the book, or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting before you began on the journey? I feel that when I was writing it, that certain things that occurred would not normally occur. And they were like twists and turns in the narrative that were surprising. Um, and uh, like what certain characters do and how they relate to the dog mm-hmm. um, can be like catharsis when you read the book, certain things that occur that are not normal. Like, uh, I don't know if I can't really give you an example, but um, that's what, and that was surprising because I didn't think it was going to go in that direction. And that kind of gave me confidence when I said, oh, that's a nice little twist or that's a enlightening, it's a lighter, happier thing that cur- uh, that can occur. Um, and that seemed to make it what it is. And Nancy, who is your intended audience, and what are you hoping to see them take from your book? My intended audience is probably a school audience or a family audience that is uh, middle graders. And what I want them to take from my book is maybe a summertime read that maybe they would enjoy and enlighten their summer when they say it's a rainy day, pull out your book and read a little bit and take away a little bit of an author's perception of what can be um, a great time in the summer to uh, help people and help yourself and help your family. Mm. And listen, Nancy, let's get into the other books. I do want to give you an opportunity to give us a brief description of the other book that you've recently released called Swim Into Summer. Tell us a little bit more about that narrative, please. Women to Summer is meant for slightly older children that are possibly high school age that are going into the world and experiences that you have that could lead to a um, knowledge about what's what's out there in the real world and what's what what you can try to take from your own experiences growing up and lead into a, a ho- hopefully hopeful time in your adult career in your adult world Mm -hmm. trying to help people that are um, teenagers going into the real world about a girl um, growing up and how she deals with her life issues what's next for you i know we have total fluff we have swim into summer but we have four other books that you've written and published amongst many other short stories that you've written and haven't published yet. What's on the horizon? What's upcoming? Well, right now, um, I hope to continue when I get inspirations to keep writing and write different um, styles 
and uh, types of uh, literary works. I I've only tend to write books um, and articles, but I'm willing to branch out to new fields of writing and hopefully be successful. Mm-hmm. The gift that keeps on giving, guys. I said it. Make sure you're checking into the Amazon Barnes & Noble pages frequently to gather more books by Nancy the moment that they become available. And Nancy, as I stated to you on the pre-screening call, I'm an artist myself. I'm in a different medium. But I love having this platform to really be able to pay it forward, in a sense, to other artists out there listening in. In this instance, other writers out there. And Nancy, you are someone that has been through the process. You are a bona fide writer. You've written multiple books, but not only that, you didn't stop there, right? You continued the journey, and you went through the process of getting the book published. And anybody that's been through the writing process understands writing the narrative is only half the battle. Well, I'd love to take this opportunity to steal any words of wisdom from you for any new writers out there listening in, someone just starting out. What are some words of wisdom that you'd like to relate to them? Never quit. Keep mm. writing. Write your heart out. Something you write, someone will notice, and they'll relate to it, and they will want you to publish it, and they'll tell you how good it is. Just keep writing. One time that you write something good, you'll know. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just write what you know, and you will be successful. I love it. I love it. Guys, listen, perseverance, persistence is key in anything that you're doing. What wonderful advice for writers, really just anybody, right? Because that advice can be taken and implemented into our day-to-day lives regardless of your career path, right? Anything that you're doing, you just got to keep your head down and continue to push forward. And sometimes... The light in the tunnel may be very bleak, right? It may seem like it's very distant, but by sticking with it, remaining persistent, you will persevere. I absolutely love it. And guys, you know what I love even more? Is we're at the end of the interview now. And we've discussed so much information with regards to total fluff, with regards to swimming to summer, but yet somehow we've barely scratched the surface. (laughs) <laughs> right. I mean, there's still so much left to be discovered. You know what you have to do. I'm going to say it once more, even though I know I don't have to. But it's a wonderful book for you to have on your shelf. Total Fluff is the title you have to pick up. Nancy Presbelowitz is the author you have to thank for bringing it to your table. And Amazon and Barnes & Noble are the places you have to go. Make sure you're looking into her other books, Swim Into Summer, as well as the other narratives that she's created as well. You surely will not be disappointed. Let's get lost in the journey. And it starts with this amazing book. Nancy, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. You, you are very, I just want to compliment you. You're a very great interviewer. And it was very, I felt very fortunate to be interviewed by you. 